COVID-19 does not care who we are, where we live, what we believe, or about any other distinction. We need every ounce of solidarity to tackle it together. Yet, the pandemic continues to unleash a tsunami of hate and xenophobia, scapegoating and scaremongering. Anti-foreigner sentiment has surged online and in the streets. Anti-Semitic conspiracy theories have spread and COVID-19 related anti-Muslim attacks have occurred. Migrants and refugees have been vilified as a source of the virus and then denied access to medical treatment. With all the persons among the most vulnerable, contemptible memes have emerged suggesting they are also the most expendable. And journalists, whistleblowers, health professionals, aid workers and human rights defenders are being targeted simply for doing their jobs. We must act now to strengthen the immunity of our societies against the virus of hate. That is why I'm appealing today for an all-out effort to end hate speech globally. I call on political leaders to show solidarity with all members of their societies and build and reinforce social cohesion. I call on educational institutions to focus on digital literacy at a time when billions of young people are online and when extremists are seeking to prey on captive and potentially despairing audiences. I call on the media, especially social media companies, to do much more to flag and, in line with international human rights law, remove racist, misogynist, and other harmful content. I call on civil society to strengthen outreach to vulnerable people and religious actors to serve as models of mutual respect. And I ask everyone, everywhere, to stand up against hate, treat each other with dignity, and take every opportunity to spread kindness. Last year, I launched the United Nations Strategy and Plan of Action on Hate Speech to enhance United Nations efforts against this scourge. As we combat the pandemic, we have a duty to protect people and stigma and prevent violence. Let's defeat hate speech and COVID-19 together.